Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on Revit site setting out. So you can see here I'm in Revit, I've got a blank project running. And the first thing I'm going to do here is change the project view here to the site plane. Now in the site plane you'll see that the default orientation is project north. I'm going to set this to true north because after all we want north pointing upwards and our DWG or DXF file that we bring in needs to be orientated to that. So we go ahead here and now go into AutoCAD. Now I'm in AutoCAD here but this could be MicroStation or any other CAD uh, file. And you'll see here that I have a CAD drawing in the background. All the unnecessary layers that I don't need to see have been frozen or switched off. And you can see here that I've clearly marked out setting out point 1 with the east in north in and the z elevation. And I've also done that for a secondary point as well just for checking procedures. OK, so I'm quite happy with this CAD file, so we'll save that. And we'll now go into Revit and we'll proceed to bring this information in. So we go to the Insert ribbon here and then Link CAD. Notice I'm saying Link CAD, so if the survey changes we can update it at a later point in time. So here is my file and you can see here that we're bringing in um, a DWG. Now of course it could be a DXF file or it could even be a DGN. We're preserving the colour format here. We're bringing in just the visible layers because we've already configured this in AutoCAD. We've ascertained that it's already in meters. Um, if you weren't sure of that, you could type in UN in CAD and you'd now see it's in meters. We're bringing this in center to center. Now, what we want to do here is we don't worry about the coordinates in AutoCAD at the moment. We just bring it in center to center. We also want to make sure that the CAD data doesn't exceed a 20 mole limit so what I'd normally do here is zoom extents make sure it doesn't jump out into space and then we'll bring this in at level 1 so let's say OK here and you can now see our CAD data is into Revit the next thing to do is switch on the project base point so we go to visibility graphics and in here we'll locate the site category and then we'll switch on project base point now the project base point is actually the zero zero point of Revit by default and what we're going to do now is select our DWG file we're going to move it from our agreed setting out point which is here and we're going to snap it onto the project base point and that's it our site plan is almost completed the very next thing we need to do is actually now set the coordinate system because of course now Currently it reads 00, zero and we want it to read the easting and northing and the Z elevation here. So we go to the manage ribbon, specify coordinates at point, select the project base point, and then in here I can now proceed to type in the eastings, northings and the Z coordinate. Now you have to remember here of course that we're working in meters, so I need to transform this into millimeters for Revit. So I omit the decimal point here. So we've got 180863584 and a level of 214. Yep, so we've got two, two, uh, sorry, 21,400. So we'll say OK there. What I would normally do here as well is go to the annotate ribbon and just place a spot coordinate on here. Just to confirm that it is in the correct coordinate system. Yeah, we can see that's actually correct. Now, if you want to, you can obviously change this. Um, I don't really want that to be uh, northing first, so I could say, right, top value is eastings, bottom value is northings, and what we could do here is say include elevation as well. And now you can see we have a, a perfect readout of what we're looking at. So we'll save that as the Revit site file. OK, great, that's done. So we'll close that down. And we'll now start our model file. So we'll say new structural template. First thing we'll do here is we'll make sure we switch on again the site file and the project base point. Obviously that's 0, 0. And now we'll go ahead and import our information. 
Now, here, of course, we could bring in a, any uh, CAD files we've got, like a grid file. So I'll go ahead and locate that. And I'm going to go ahead and move this into here. And of course, now we can start to generate our grids. So I'll go to grid. And I'm just going to pick off the DWG information. So here, we'll say is grid 5. And here will be grid A. Obviously, there I could start to create the rest of the grids and so on, but that's fine. I'll just turn off my background DWG data there, and you can now see I have just my grid showing. Okay, and that's my model file now complete, so we'll save that. And we'll call this one model file. And we'll close that down. So next off, we go back into the site file that we've just prepared. And we can now simply insert our model file into the site file. We'll just do this center to center. Doesn't really matter where it ends up. So there it is. And we'll go ahead now and move that from the grid setting out point in here. And of course, we'll rotate this as well. So we take our base point to here and we rotate it to our reference. So there's our grid file. What we're now able to do is select that Revit file and you can see in the properties window here our link file is not shared. So we'll go ahead here and publish the shared coordinates back into the current project and click reconcile and then save. Now notice we get the warning up here saying that the position's changed and we're about to save these coordinates back to the file, that's fine. That's done, and then we'll close the file down here. Go back into our model file. Okay, it always opens up in an elevation, but that's fine. We can now go back to the site file, and you'll now see that when we switch from uh, Project North to True North, the rotation changes. If I now go ahead and we decide to put on a spot coordinate. Yeah, we'll see we have the correct coordinate there and of course if I switch it to Project North there's a correct coordinate there. Now the beauty of this of course is if I um, start to play around with levels or move the project it would all update. If I change one of these levels here and we'll go from the elevation point being to the survey point here obviously it will read off the correct level so you can see here we've got again back to 21.4 Okay, hope that's been useful. Thanks very much.